When I was 17, I had just completed the higher school certificate, which is the final exam students take that ranks you amongst all the other students in the state. The higher your score, the better the university you can attend. Obviously, my parents migrated to Australia for a better life in hopes that their children don't have to endure the same struggles that they went through. But we all know the real reason. Chinese parents just want their kids to go to the best university so they can brag at Yumcha. But for me, I scored a 69 out of 100, which meant I was rejected by all the universities I had applied for, as they all demanded a minimum of 96. Close enough. At this point in my life, my parents had practically given up hope on me. However, there is a silver lining in every moment in our lives. So with all this time I had when I was 17 and zero plans to attend university, I spent most of my time on the internet doing random sh** like gaming. Now, as I'm doing all this random sh** online, I somehow ended up making $300,000. But the lesson here isn't about how I made the 300,000, but more around how it helped me overcome imposter syndrome as a designer. So I wanna share with you the exact logical steps that I took. Now, first I will define what is imposter syndrome in the context of design. So we are all on the same page. Then we will break down exactly why you may be struggling with imposter syndrome. And at the end, I'll explain how my $300,000 breakthrough brought me an entirely new perspective to my professional life and helped me live freely from imposter syndrome. So what is imposter syndrome? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved. In other words, you feel like a fake, a fraud, or you don't deserve your success. So in the context of being a designer, more specifically a product or UX designer, you just don't feel confident about your decisions, your work, your process, and whatever path you may have taken to get yourself to where you are today, you just feel inadequate. Now this leads me on to the next question. Why are you feeling this way? After mentoring hundreds of designers, I have concluded that there are two reasons why. Now first, you are not tracking your progress the correct way. And second, you are seeking validation from unreliable sources. So let's first talk about tracking your progress the correct way first. Now in every skill we learn and practice, we generally are able to track our progress. For example, learning how to snowboard for the first time. The biggest problem for first time snowboarders is that they are constantly falling. That is the problem. So when you are reducing the amount of falls, you know you are improving. Now if you wanna learn how to play table tennis for the first time, the biggest problem for first time players is actually being able to return the ball. So if you can reduce the amount of times you make a fault, you know you were improving. Now the key takeaway is that you have a clear definition of what success looks like and you are tracking your progress towards it. Now in product and UX design, so much is happening. So it's a little bit harder to define what is success and how we should track it. Is it the UI design? Is it the research? Is it how we manage stakeholders? So the question is, what defines success for product and UX designers? It is not about how many years you've designed or how many projects you've worked on. Remember, the product and UX designers are hired to solve customer problems to help the business grow. So the true indicator of our work's performance include metrics like conversion rates, engagement rates, revenue targets, NPS scores, and other North Star metrics. So when you complete a project, ask yourself, are you following up with your team or your client on these specific metrics or numbers to see if it's actually improving? Because if you were not religiously doing that, you are not really tracking your progress. So if you do not track your progress, you will never actually know if you are getting better or not, which means you will never truly be able to build confidence in your skill set. So this leads me on to the next question. Are you relying on unreliable sources, not these ones, but these ones, to gain your validation and your confidence? 
Now, as a designer, if you are not tracking your true success metric, which is the performance of your work, then you will eventually try to seek it from other sources. In most cases, I have noticed designers rely on other people to give them that validation, which I find quite dangerous. Relying on others to validate you is as reliable as skydiving without a parachute. Skydiver Luke Aitkins made history when he jumped from an airplane without a parachute. Now, I'm not saying you should never ask people for feedback. You definitely should. But whatever they say shouldn't indicate your worth or your value. So remember, the true indicator to success, which is logical and unbiased, is to just let your work's performance determine it. Understanding, did your designs actually increase the conversion rate? Did it actually get customers raving? Did it actually generate more revenue or whatever that North Star your project is tracking for the company? Now, if it didn't, you iterate on it until it does. And if you let that true indicator guide your path over time, you will become more independent and more confident in your work because you genuinely know it works. So in the end, back to the story when I was 17, I was curious and obsessed with the internet. After making my very first dollar from starting an online gaming forum, I stumbled into affiliate marketing, which is where you find products to promote. You build a website, you advertise it, and you really, your goal is to make a commission on every single sale. Now, since this was nearly 15 years ago, there was no online mentor program, which meant I had to rely entirely on myself to learn design and code. Now, thanks to that, I stumbled onto the topic of A-B testing on an internet marketing forum which means when you have a landing page, you can create multiple versions and you can test them against each other to see which one actually generates the most sales. Now, after generating $300,000 worth of sales, I learned a lot about which design tactics actually work or not. It gave me a lot of confidence because the results spoke for themselves. For example, if I had two landing pages, design A received a thousand US visits, but only 10 people bought the product and design B, which would have a small change to the design, received 1000 US visits, but 200 people bought the product. This means that small change that I applied to design B tells me that it's answering the customer's concern and it's increasing the conversion rate, ultimately gaining me more sales. In the end, from a very early stage, I learned to rely on my work's performance to determine my worth and also help guide my path. So if you are feeling imposter syndrome, ask yourself, are you actually tracking your progress the right way? And are you seeking validation from the wrong sources? That's it for this video, guys. If you learned something, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Woo!